We're back in my son's room for this video and I, along with a lot of you, have bought the plans to already build the dresser and crib and now we're overdue for a toy box to match. Let's get right into the build. This first step of the project can be super time consuming and doesn't get emphasized enough. The grain and color in your material play a huge factor in how the overall project turns out in the end. So it's important to take your time and get as much of your cuts planned out as possible. Quarter saw and white oak isn't very cheap in this case, so I don't have much extra material to choose from, so it's just a game of doing the best you can with what you have. Normally the material from my hardwood dealer comes straight line ripped on one edge so I can either start right at the joiner or table saw. But for this batch it wasn't, and as you can see they are all pretty wonky. So the first step was creating one straight edge with the track saw. A lot of these boards had some sap wood in them as well, so it was an opportunity to get that cut out as I personally didn't want that look for this piece. With that done, I could put the straight edge that I created along the miter saw and table saw fences to break everything down to its smaller rough dimension. I'd be gluing up panels for all four sides of the box and by using two pieces from the same board and just rotating them together, it's a great way to get a nearly seamless grain and color transition. With all the pieces broke down, I could start getting one face flattened and one edge squared up on the joiner and then plane down to thickness on the planer. Of course, if you're interested in building this and don't have these machines, buying pre-milled lumber is always an option. And taking this step out, this really is a quick and easy project. I was really happy with how seamless these panels came together. This one panel did need a little work though. I mean, it was fine enough to clamp, but I wanted to go ahead and share this joiner tip you can do to get them absolutely perfect. By folding the pieces like a book and putting the back of one piece along the joiner fence and then the face of the mating piece, it'll eliminate any issues of the joiner fence not being 100% square. By my exaggerated lines here, you can see no matter what angle the joiner fence is, the two pieces will still come together perfectly. At this point, I could go ahead and get all four panels of the box glued up, as well as the top lid. Just like the crib and dresser, to get the thicker legs, I had to laminate a couple pieces together. Next was taking the rail and style pieces to make all the panel frames down to their final size. The tongue and groove joinery here can be cut on the table saw like I've shown before, but again, and I probably don't need to keep saying this, but to match the crib and dresser I'm using this Freud shaker router bit set with the bevel detail on the inside edge. The inside edge of all four pieces get the groove. You'll see I like to mark the back of all my pieces, in this case with some green tape. It just helps make sure I'm running all my pieces through in the correct orientation with the show face down especially when I start flipping the pieces cutting the tongues. So even if my groove isn't exactly dead center, they'll at least all be the same and come together perfectly. With all the grooves done, I switched over to cut the tongues and both ends of all the vertical pieces. This is where you wanna make sure you mill up a little extra material of the same size so you can run some test pieces and get the height dialed in. This coping sled is just a cheaper one off of Amazon, but has worked really well for me. You don't need a sled at all to cut these actually, but I do find it quite a bit easier to run the pieces through.
With the center panels cut to size, next I cut a rabbet on all four sides to slide into the grooves in the frames. While sanding and cleaning up the shop a bit, right on cue the Rubio Monaco and the color Natural got delivered so I could keep the process moving. The Natural looks so good on this white oak and these builds for my son have probably been some of my favorites simply because of the finish. It looks pretty good on video, but for some reason it looks so much better in person. As you can see it's super easy to apply it too. I just spread it out on panels like this and then buff it in with a white scotch Brite pad. Then wipe off the excess a few minutes later. Here you can see why I wanted to pre-finish these panels. Given the time of year and our climate here, these panels are 100% going to shrink a little this winter, and if I didn't pre-finish those edges that are inside the grooves right now, when they shrink you'd see the unfinished edge. As I'm adding glue to the tongues and getting these clamped up, you can see I'm being mindful to get the edges lined up perfect and tapping with a mallet if needed, since I've already cut the pieces to their final size. Another option I do on bigger projects would be to leave the pieces a little oversized and then trim everything flush after they're dry. While those were drying, I kept moving by re-squaring up the legs since I left those oversized for the glue up. To join the panels to the legs, I again just used tried and true dowels. I know, I know, in the YouTube world you guys are used to one extreme of pocket hole screws or the other extreme of the festival domino, but we like to keep it clean and simple around here. Finally I could stop getting splinters from this white oak and hit all the exposed edges with just a slight Freud 1 16th inch round over bit. After the panels were dry I could then go ahead and get the mating dowel holes and those drilled. These strips I'm gluing on the inside bottom edge of all four panels are for the plywood bottom to set on. And after those were on I went ahead and did a dry fit to get an exact measurement for the bottom panel. Then it was go time, adding the glue and dowels and getting this thing clamped up to dry. You'll see I added some tape to all those inside corners so I could just peel it off and not have any glue squeeze out to worry about cleaning up and trying to sand those inside corners afterwards. I cut the bottom panel nice and snug and got that inserted wall gluing up as well to help keep the box square. And after verifying it was bang on perfect as it set, I walked away to let it dry.
Lastly, I could get the lid finished up. And for the hinges, I use these lid stay torsion hinges from Rockler. I've used these quite a bit and they offer this jig as well to make installing them a breeze. To route out the recessed area for the hinges on the box, I clamped on a couple scrap pieces to add stability to the router and also prevent any tear out. With all the finish done, I installed the hinges and got the lid attached to the box. But unfortunately at this point, figured out I'd need to add a third hinge in the middle. These torsion hinges are supposed to hold the whole time at any angle to prevent any smash fingers. And as you can see on my daughter's toy box, I only use two hinges and it works perfect. But this white oak is quite a bit heavier than the poplar I used on hers. But no big deal, I have a third one on the way and went ahead and got the box prepped for when it arrives, so all I have to do is screw it on when it gets here. Besides that little hiccup, that's a wrap for this one. If you're interested in the plans, they're linked down below in the video description, along with all the tools and products I use throughout the video. That little subscribe and thumbs up button is down there too. Just saying.